Brazil have produced their fair share of top wingers, from Neymar to Ronaldinho and more recently Vinicius and Rodrigo. So after reaping the rewards of signing Gabriel Martinelli, it looks like Arsenal are shopping in Brazil again, but have they agreed a deal for 19 year old Marquinhos? What's the latest on Gabriel Jesus from Fabrizio Romano? Has Paulo Dybala's agent been contacted and how will Arsenal line up in their gargantuan Monday night game against Newcastle? Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bavs14. Welcome back to your boys channel and we are back again with all of that latest Arsenal news. So if you enjoy, smash a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new and help your boy as we get closer and closer to 90,000 subscribers. But first things first, let's talk Marquinhos. We talked about him in our last video. He is a Brazilian young attacker, 19 years of age, as playing for Sao Paulo in Brazil with Arsenal's technical director in Edu Gaspar trying to get his transfer over the line as soon as possible. While in the latest development, Charles Watt confirms, Marquinhos is set to become Arthur's first summer signing and the deal has been agreed with Sao Paulo, with even Fabrizio Romano now confirming that Arthur are now preparing the paperwork to complete the Marquinhos deal with Sao Paulo. The Brazilian club will receive around 3 to 3.5 million euros in total fee. 3 to 3.5 million euros, Arthur are getting a player, a Brazilian attacker, a left winger slash secondary striker, He's got 4 goals and 3 assists in 39 appearances and granting those are amazing stats but this my friends is a player for the future of Arsenal Football Club. However, he could earn himself a place on a summer tour of the USA if he impresses in pre-season. This is an opportunity that Edu Gaspar has seen in the Brazilian market and is an opportunity not just for a signing but also to form a connection with Sao Paulo. In the past we have seen Arsenal utilise the market in Brazil with the prime example being Gabriel Martinelli but apart from that and maybe Pablo Mori Arsenal haven't used that market enough, especially considering the contacts that Edu Gaspar has. So therefore, in a way to form a connection with Sao Paulo, Arsenal are giving them 3.5 million euros, signing Marquinhos, and establish a relationship going into the future that if these guys as expected produce some top players then Arsenal will be the first ones calling and will have the connection to make the transfers happen. But with the price tag only being 3.5 million euros it's not really going to impact Arsenal's main summer transfer targets and this was also confirmed by Chris Wheatley. The arrival of Marquinhos will not have any impact on the club's summer transfer plans with the likes of Man City's Gabriel Jesus, Leicester's Yuri Tielemans and Bologna defender Aaron Hickey also being targeted. This is a player for the future, the deal is basically done, so welcome to Arsenal Marquinhos, let's put you to one side and now let's talk about the main summer transfer targets. And starting off with Gabriel Jesus, as Fabrizio Romano says that Arsenal are preparing the opening bid for Gabriel Jesus, with Man City wanting around 50 to 60 million euros to sell Gabriel this summer, even if he's not extending his current deal. Arsenal have already talked with Gabriel's agent, who says that he likes the project. The price tag of Gabriel Jesus seems to be getting higher as the weeks go by. You've got a top potential player in the making who's got so much Premier League experience. We're talking Premier League titles, FA Cups, Carabao Cups, goals in Champions League semi-finals. A player that is now entering the peak of his powers, of course Man City want as much money as possible. But on top of that, he's only got one year left on his contract and that's what gives Arthur the advantage here. Man City have to sell the player in this transfer window. So what Arthur have to do here is call Man City's bluff and say, listen, if you're not trying to negotiate on our terms and our price tag then you guys can keep the player and will sign him on a free transfer when his contract expires. But on top of that though Arsenal have some concerns. The first being that apparently six other clubs also have interest but on top of that are also going to have the attraction of the Champions League. But in terms of the Gunners according to Chris Wheatley Arsenal remain confident of sealing a deal for Gabriel Jesus with positive talks ongoing between his representatives and technical director Edu Gaspar. It looks like Edu Gaspar is involved quite heavily in the transfer and it makes a lot of sense why. The fact that he's worked at Brazil with the national team he would have worked with Gabriel Jesus and when it comes to working with Jesus the same also applies with Mikel Arteta. But what do you guys believe is an ideal price like for Gabriel Jesus and if it came down to you would you pay the 50 or 60 million euro fee that Man City are asking for? Keeping it on the transfers according to Calcio Napoli Arsenal and Bologna have reached an agreement between 20 to 25 million euros for defender Aaron Hickey. Following Bologna's sporting director Ricardo Bigon's visit to London this week. There are now last details to be finalised for the transfer. According to reports 
Sport in Italy, Arsenal are closing in to signing a brand new left back, Scottish international Aaron Hickey. And the same source also claims that Napoli are now facing an uphill battle in the pursuit of Aaron Hickey, after Arsenal agreed a fee with Bologna. The relations between Bologna and Arsenal are excellent. Napoli therefore have pulled out of the move and have shifted the focus to other defensive targets. At this point, whenever we hear that an Arsenal target is also wanted by Napoli, we might as well confirm an Arsenal transfer because it always seems to happen. I'm very excited about this transfer if it does happen. He's 19 years of age, he's got so much potential and the fact that he's ambidextrous, he's got that 5 star week for left foot, right foot, it's light work for Aaron Hickey. The fact that Arsenal have signed Tomiyasu in the past clearly shows that Arteta likes that type of player. But while Tomiyasu is that typical inverted right back, Aaron Hickey loves to get forwards. And the fact that he's got 5 league goals in this area proves that. Now I will say that his crossing can certainly improve, but for the price tag of only 20 million euros for a player that can play on the left hand side and the right hand side, all in all it looks like a pretty decent transfer. But what do you guys make of the Scottish international and Aaron Hickey? And for the price tag and the age profile, do you think he's a good signing for Arsenal Football Club? Moving on to Newcastle versus Arsenal. In typical Babs 14 fashion, there is only one way to describe this game and that is massive and gargantuan. Spurs have laid the gauntlet towards Arsenal to say look we've taken your fourth place, come get it back now. And we are going to be up against a pretty decent Newcastle team. 14th place in the league and out of the last 5 games they won 3 but lost their last 2 to Liverpool and Man City. In comparison Arsenal of course were on a 4 game winning streak but lost their last game 3-0 emphatically to Tottenham Hotspur. Those last 2 games I'm not going to read into it too much but what I will say prior to that is in the year of 2022, under their brand new manager and the new owners, in the league at St James's Park, Newcastle have only lost one game and that was the game against the Champions League finalists, FA Cup winners and Carabao Cup winners in Liverpool a few weeks ago. And that was only 1-0 so for Arsenal to go to St James's Park in their final home game of the season the fans are going to be boisterous. Yes they might be 14th place but oh boy this game is not going to be easy. And looking into the Newcastle team news. The likes of Kieran Trippier and Callum Wilson could be back, but they will be without the likes of Isaac Hayden, John Joe Shelby and Joseph Willock. No Willock and no John Joe Shelby. Yes, they've got Bruno Guimaraes, but that's two key players out of their team. Looking into the Arsenal team news when asked about Gabriel Magalhaes, Mikel Arteta says we will know more perhaps tomorrow. We will extend this period for as long as possible to see how they feel and how they recover. We'll examine them tomorrow and we will know perhaps more. So as things stands, Gabriel is a doubt. We don't know about Ben White. But then powering Partey and Tierney, the rest of it Arthur will have a fully fit squad. So therefore here's how I think Mikel Arteta is going to line up. We will see a full 2-3-1 formation with the back fourth Tommy Asu on the right hand side with White, Gabriel and Tavares completing the back four. The midfield of Xhaka and El Elneny and the trio of Smith, Rowe, Odegaard and Saka behind the striker in Eddie and Ketia. Now there are some very controversial changes there that I'm sure some Arsenal fans are going to see some disagreements. But the question that I'm going to ask you guys is who do you think is Newcastle's main threat? And the answer is pretty simple, it's Alan St Maxima. So to nullify their main threat I want to see our best 1v1 defender on that side and that is Takehiro Tomiyasu. They also have Joe Linton playing as an inverted 8 on the left hand side as well. Joe Linton alongside St Maximan are Newcastle's biggest threats by a country mile which is exactly why it's vitally important that Arteta starts his best right back on the right hand side and that being Tomiyasu. Now on the left hand side of course I've dropped Gabriel Martinelli and I'm not saying he was poor against Spurs whereas what you have in Tavares and Smith Rowe is a pretty decent combination which worked in the first half of the season. It allows Smith Rowe to occupy the half space and come inside up against the cells which would then allow Tavares to hold the whip on the left hand side to attack Emil Croft. In an away game which is going to be so difficult and is must win, I also need to have technical players and the most Smith Rowe on the left hand side our second highest goal scorer for me he simply has to start. I must point out this is just your boy's opinion so talk to me about yourselves down below in the comments and if you were the Arsenal manager what would be your own personal Arsenal predicted lineup? But when it comes to Newcastle versus Arsenal, let's just say Arsenal have a pretty decent record. In fact, the Gunners have won 17 out of the last 18 Premier League games against Newcastle. This is a brand new Newcastle team. Normal Mike Ashley or Steve Bruce, Eddie Howe's at the wheel now. They've got brand new owners, they've got new signings. But at the same time, this is an Anfield away. This isn't the Etihad away. Yes, Newcastle are a great team at home, but they are 14th in the league. So ask yourself this question. If Arsenal can't be the 14th best team in the Premier League to 
get themselves into the Champions League, would they even deserve to be there in the first place? All to your thoughts going into this game, do you believe that this young Arsenal team will be able to show their character, bounce back from the Spurs defeat and reclaim the fourth position? As always, let me know your matchday predictions down below in the comments. And moving on to the other Arsenal news today, and starting off with a bit of transfer news and a player in this area that plays for Juventus but won't be there come the start of next season. As Paulo Dybala has confirmed on his official Twitter account that he is leaving Juventus at the end of the season. With his current contract expiring at 28 years of age, Dybala will be a free agent that potentially might interest Arsenal Football Club. And in terms of Arsenal, according to James Olly, there are contacts between Arsenal and Paulo Dybala's agents. On top of that, you also have ex-Torino defender and current journalist Massimo Brambatti, who says, I was told by a person close to the environment that if Arsenal qualifies for the Champions League, Dybala will go there. The key is in the court there and there, Arsenal will only sign a player the calibre of Dybala if they secure Champions League. In terms of the finances, Arsenal can make this happen. Not only is it a free transfer, but looking into the wages, having let go of Aubameyang, Lacazette leaving as well, Arsenal have got so much free wage space that Arsenal could sign two Dybalas and still have money left over. Now at 28 years of age, this guy is on the peak of his powers and on his day, yes, Dybala is a world-class player. This year in all competitions, he has 21 goals and assists, but he does have his injury concerns. And over these last two or three seasons, there is a reoccurring theme. There seems to be a consistent thigh injury that holds him back. And prior to that, you've also got hamstring injuries and overall, it's not the best in terms of muscular injuries. I guess that he could play as a false line and as a secondary striker. He'd give this awful squad much needed experience. This is is a massive opportunity for Arsenal which could happen but is it one that you guys would like to see Arsenal make it happen? On to some breaking news and that is that William Saliba has been officially named the league uh, 2022 young player of the year. Following in the footsteps of Aurelio Chouameni and Kylian Mbappe, the Mbappe as centre-back is living up to his prophecy. 51 appearances, 20 clean sheets, 3 Marseille player of the month awards and also made his senior debut for France. It's been such a successful loan spell in so many ways. First things first in terms of experience. Prior to this year, Saliba had not played a single full season in his entire career. But also on top of that quality, to get a France call up at that age with the defenders that France have, to win the league or young player of the year award. But the next step for that prophecy now is to return to Arsenal Football Club. Bring him back to the Emirates Stadium alongside Ben White Gabriel. As Josh Kroenke may have once said, in terms of the Arsenal centre backs, my friends, be excited. But now let's talk about a top four race. First things first, you had Spurs winning their game today, 1-0 at home against Burnley. In the process, they leapfrog Arsenal into fourth place, two points clear, a superior goal difference, but having also played one game extra. All this does is add even more pressure on the game against Newcastle. When Antonio Conte was asked on watching Newcastle vs Arsenal, he says, I want to watch the game, I want to suffer, followed by a laugh. Forget about referees and other teams doing us a favour. This is all in our hands. Win our two games, return to the Champions League and take this Arsenal project to the next level. But that is the video there and there, so hopefully you guys have enjoyed and if you have, make sure to go down there to smash a like and also to subscribe if you are new. If you would like to follow your in all of those social medias then the links will be down below in the description and now the focus is on Newcastle St James's Park under the lights it's gonna be electric it's gonna be hard but for all for the task is simple collect the three points retake fourth place and onto the final game of the season will they do it we're gonna have to wait and see until then take care of yourselves and in a bit